In, in modern India, the, there's this kind of famous trope that's generally used in, in national discourse that uh, monotheism is somehow uh, less, uh, in, less accommodative of pluralism as opposed to polytheism, which seems to be a, a natural, you know, which, which seems to naturally lead to uh, multiculturalism and pluralism. I mean, but of course, I mean that's a reductionist reading of these categories. And this, this, yeah, this, it's this, a generalization at a level that's that's hard to imagine. You know, um, the, the Romans were pagan, and they are famous for their persecution of the early Christians. Huh. Right? Yeah. Uh, and um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. I can think of lots of historical examples where uh, um, people who had a generally polytheistic uh, uh, system were quite intolerant uh, of, of certain groups. Uh, and uh, uh, so I, 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 I would resist, I think that's a form of essentialism. Mm -hmm. And as a historian, I would res resist it. I mean, the, the human beings, it, uh, I've lived all around the world and I've seen a lot. And, uh, and I've also, read a lot and I think human beings are very similar to one another they haven't there are new species you know we're only a couple hundred thousand years old maybe 300,000 at most and uh, we haven't had time to diverge from one another uh, the, the Irish and the Chinese who are at the two ends of the kind of spread of humanity through the earth uh, out of Africa uh, are genetically almost identical uh, and um uh, we make a, a big deal, you know, out of our differences. Uh, skin color is emphasized, whereas it's really meaningless. It just, it's an adaptation to UV rays. It, it doesn't tell you anything except how, how bright the place was where people's ancestors lived. Uh, and um, uh, but, so we, we emphasize these differences or between the religions, you know, uh, um, people would say that Islam has a do doctrine of jihad and Christianity doesn't, the Christians are peaceful, the Muslims are not. But I went through and, and to, tried to did, do basic calculations. Uh, I believe in the 20th century, people of Christian heritage um, uh, killed uh, on the order of 100 million people in the world. Uh, I think people of Muslim heritage probably killed about 3 million in that same period. Uh, so the fact that the Christians have uh, a more pacific, uh, perhaps, uh, uh, scripture, if you only take the New Testament and ignore, but most Christians don't, they take the Old Testament as well, which is full of wars. Uh, but but uh, the, the, what their scripture says is not relevant to their actual behavior. Uh, and uh, so uh, I just would resist this way of thinking. I think uh, people can be intolerant who are polytheists, people can be intolerant who are monotheists, and the same is true of tolerance, uh, both kinds. So, you know, in uh, in Muslim South Asian history, uh, Mirza Mazhar Jani Janan, the great Sufi of the 18th century, explicitly uh, calls Krishna one of God's messengers. Uh, so... Yeah. You know, there's a there's a Muslim tradition of, mm -hmm. of tolerance uh, uh, on uh, on Sufi and and Neoplatonic grounds uh, that's very widespread and 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 still exists in much of the world. Uh, it's uh, now we don't hear so much about it compared to the more militant Salafis. But um, no, I, I would reject that uh, point of view. Yeah. I know it's not yours. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, interestingly, this is this view is espoused by someone like Shashi Tharoor, uh, the the famous politician as well as a prolific writer. Um, uh, I mean, th th this also seems seems relevant to me because uh, th there's I mean, there's, there's another related trope in in Indian national discourse, which which I mean, all, all of this seems relevant to the 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 prophetic ethos with regard to pluralism and, and with regard to the multiplicity of religions, because about uh, Indian Islam, for example, I mean, uh, this is uh, this is an, an anecdote from uh, a Jaipur literature festival which I had attended a few be few years back when uh, I mean, things were still open. Um, and uh, Salman Khurshid, who's a famous politician and a writer in India, he was one of the panelists, and he was speaking about uh, uh, 
the uniqueness of, I mean, th these are his words, the, the uniqueness of Indian Islam is that, uh, I mean, this is how it differs from Arabic Islam or, you know, Wahhabi Islam, uh, in that uh, it has always been a kind of syncretistic tradition that uh, Indian Islam is so great because it has taken from Indian traditions and, you know, Hindu traditions. And only, I mean, the, the, the logic is that uh, syncretism is a mark of pluralism. But of course, I mean, this, uh, the, the prophetic ethos seems, seems to, to be theologically underlenting or uncompromising while at the same time being socially ecumenical, which is, which is a, a re really important nuance, I think, especially in these circumstances as well. I think the Quran is, is also theologically ecumenical. Of course, yeah. I think it acknowledges the truth of uh, 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 Judaism and Christianity, yeah. perhaps even of Zoroastrianism. Mm. Uh, and um, I think for the Quran, I see the Quran as impatient uh, with theological uh, wrangling. Uh, the Quran, and then there was a lot of theological wrangling in the time of the Quran, right? Between various sects of Christianity, you were killing each other over these things. And I think it's, it's impatient with those, uh, con the concentration on the nusie. Uh, and so, I think that uh, the, the Surah of the Cow, um, Al-Baqarah um, uh, 262, it, it says that Jews and Christians and uh, Sabians and Muslims uh, uh, who believe in the one God and believe in the resurrection day uh, and who live righteous lives uh, have nothing to fear in the afterlife. Uh, and so I think that's actually the, the credo of the Quran yeah. is that getting into heaven just as three things, mm. belief in the, in the oneness of God, belief in, in the, that, that you will be judged by God, yeah. and then the belief in and, and the action of, of living a righteous life. Uh, and that's it. And that's how you get into heaven. And, and it explicitly says that other monotheists mm. are eligible. Uh, and um, uh, I think the inclusion of this group that the later Muslim tradition doesn't know who they were, the Stabians, uh, is an example of, of how universal this sentiment is. Yeah. Personally, I suspect that the Sabians are what I call pagan monotheists. They are uh, those Roman pagans, you know, had a movement under the influence of Judaism and Christianity in, uh, in late antiquity uh, to say that, uh, well, you know, they used to worship Zeus and his wife Hera and his children Athena and, and so forth. And that I, I think the, these were pagans who said, no, only Zeus. Uh, the others are just angels. Uh, there's only one, one God. And they didn't convert to Judaism or Christianity. They remained, you know, pagans. Uh, but um, they're very similar, you know, to some some modern Hindu groups like uh, Brahma Samaj, I think, um, you know, are a kind of ultimately monotheist and see the other gods as manifestations of the one. Uh, so uh, I think those are the, the Sabians that the Quran mentions. So I think the Quran has a very universal point of view on salvation. Uh, and that's been lost sight of in the later Muslim tradition. So the, the, uh, the Christians and Muslims and other and Christians and Jews uh, are, and other monotheists are not Kafirs and they're not going to help. And contrary to what I think probably a majority of modern Muslims believe, according to the Quran at least. Mm.